This is the Riverhawk Report, a weekend recap. Spring break is over, and the spring sports are firing on all engines. Baseball, softball, golf, track and field, all in action this past weekend. Baseball was the first to return home from the sunny south and they brought the good weather with them for the home opening doubleheader with Southern Connecticut. But it appeared they'd left something on the ball fields of Florida. The baseball Riverhawks got beat twice at LaLasher Park. The offense never showed up. The scores 2-0 and 11-3. The Riverhawks did not push a run across the plate until there were two outs in the 18th inning of baseball on a Saturday afternoon. And by then, it was no more than a meaningless adjustment to the final box score. Game one, a masterful pitcher's duel. Scoreless into the eighth. Riverhawks starter does Justin Ramey unfortunately ran out of gas or couldn't get a break. The visitors pushed across two runs with two outs. That Ramey pitched, he pitched tremendous today and uh, didn't, just didn't get any support. We hit a few balls hard at guys, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, the baseball gods, when you've been so hot, it's, uh, it's one of those things that you need a ball to drop, and it didn't drop for us today, and I think the first team to score was going to win, and, 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 and they did that. you got to tip your cap to them. That's head coach Ken Herring. The game one loss should not take away from the strong outing by Ramey. The right-hander allowed five hits and two walks in his eight innings of work. He surrendered two runs while striking out eight. He was locating really well. I don't know how good his slider was. I thought it was good at times. I thought it was a little inconsistent with it, but he just located. He got ahead of hitters, and when you get ahead of hitters, you're going to have success. He's a very good pitcher. There's a reason why he's our captain. In the second game, it appeared the wheels simply fell off. The pitching staff struggled. The hitters didn't, and the team made five errors in the field. The usually reliable lefty, Jack Leathersitch, was the starter, and he just didn't have his good stuff. Simple as that. Yeah, but he'll be back. He's he's a good pitcher. He's a competitor. Uh, He just didn't have his stuff today uh, from the beginning. Southern Connecticut scored twice in the first, was up 8-0 after five, and had an 11-run lead by the time the Riverhawks' bats produced the club's first runs of the day. Again, they made pitches when they needed to... uh, I thought the difference was their hitters made adjustments and our hitters did not. As frustrating as it all was, it's still just one day. Two games, and that's Uh, it. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for my team. We've played a lot of baseball in a short amount of time. Uh, Hopefully this is a little bit of a wake-up call to, you know, hey, anybody can beat you on any given day, and Southern Con's got a good club. You know, we've we've felt the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, and to get swept on your home opener and to swing the bats like that's disappointing. Uh, Will we right the ship? Yeah, we will. Despite the losses, the Riverhawks are 11-7, 0-2 in the conference, but the conference season is just beginning. There is much baseball still to be played. The Riverhawks visit Bentley on Wednesday, and Bentley visits LaLasher Park on Thursday. Of course, all of that is weather permitting. The softball Riverhawks are headed north. Their Florida visit is over. They dropped a pair of games during the weekend to St. Leo's and head north with a respectable 6-8 and eight record. Next weekend, they play in New York State. Their first home game isn't until April. The golf season is underway as well, and the Riverhawks won the Lewisburg Hurricane UFO dispute. That's what it's called, don't blame me. It was in Lewisburg, North Carolina. Patrick Bean fired a 3 over 75 to earn medalist honors, and the team finished five shots ahead of its nearest challenger. UMass Lowell also finished third in the Hurricane Fusillade Challenge. Brendan Livingston finished in a tie for second place. He fired a 2 over 74. The outdoor track and field season is just getting started, and several UMass Lowell athletes have either qualified or provisionally qualified for the NCAA championships. Jackie Barrett and Tim Guerin top the list. Barrett, a shot putter, won the event at the Walt Disney World Invitational in Orlando, Florida, and she has qualified for the NCAA championships. Her toss of 48 feet, three and a quarter inches, is the best in the country thus far this season. Tim Guerin won the 3,000 meter steeplechase in a time of 9.05.47, That guaranteed Garin a spot at the NCAAs. Doug Caves in the 400 meters, Robert Lightweg in the 400 hurdles, and Ruben Sanka in the 10,000 meters have provisionally qualified for the NCAA championships. Freshman Shannon Cunningham won the women's 400 meters in a time of 56.57. She is provisionally qualified for the NCAAs. And that is the Riverhawk Report.